Hello, this is Breuer and welcome to a brand new Let's Play series, or should I say series of series, where we're going to be playing through what I call History of Paradox. What is History of Paradox? This is where I play through all of the history, all of the paradox, grand strategy games, starting with the oldest in history, which is currently Imperator Rome, and work my way through each of them with basically kind of a continuation of a story of sorts. Uh, I'm very excited to bring this to you today. Today, uh, officially launched the new uh, Heirs of Alexander contact pack for Imperator Rome. And not only that, but CK3 has been out for a little while, and I have not played CK3 yet. So I'm very excited to get through Imperator Rome, get into CK3, and get into some of the other games as well. I did this a couple years ago, uh, although they at the time, if I remember right, Imperator Rome had not come out yet. So I started with CK2 back then. But I'm very excited to bring this to you guys. So yeah, let's jump right into this uh, this first episode. All right, here we are in game. But before we get started, let me take care of a little YouTube business real quick, if you don't mind. Uh, I just this is the first episode of a brand new, very long series. I would really appreciate it if you guys can like, subscribe, comment below if you do appreciate and enjoy this type of content, because that really helps me know that you like it. Plus, it helps me get noticed and be more incentivized to do more content like this. So please like, subscribe, you know, all that stuff. Hit the little bell notification if you want to see these episodes come up. I'm going to try and get these episodes up every other day. Um, so you'll see at least three episodes a week for this going forward. If I decide to get to a point where I decide to do one every day, I'll let you guys know. But starting off, we'll do three episodes a week. Uh, but yeah, let's just jump right into this. I'm really excited to get into this game. Uh, it's been a very long time since I played Imperator Rome. Uh, in fact, I don't think I've played it since the, like, the first month or so that it launched. So a lot has changed. In fact, today's update brought some pretty significant changes, I'm understanding. So effectively... This is a brand new game for me, and maybe for you too as well, if you haven't had a chance to play it uh, yet either. Um, I love, I mean, EU, uh, sorry, Imperator Rome, I feel like it does not get quite enough credit. I mean, is it as good as some of the other games? Maybe not, but it also doesn't have quite as many expansions as some of the more, you know, well-established games such as uh, EU4 or even Hearts of Iron now. CK2, if you're back in the CK2, of course, CK3 is out now. But um, I think it's a very attractive game. It's, it's a lot, the map here is very beautiful in my opinion. Uh, and they've got a lot of places that you can play as. Uh, so what I did is uh, you can't, for some reason, you cannot randomize a district or a nation or whatever in Imperator Rome. For whatever reason, they just didn't include that. So what I did is I loaded up CK3, and which does have a randomizer, and randomized that to get our starting location. And of course, we're going to hopefully play through Imperator Rome and end up in that same location in CK3. Now, there's a chance that we could get displaced and, and wherever we end up in Imperator Rome, that's where I'm going to start in ECK3. So if we get displaced, I don't know, let's say we're starting in England and we get displaced all the way down to Spain, well, we're going to start in uh, CK3 somewhere in Spain, wherever that ends up. That's not what happened. What happened is we're in France. France is, I mean, if you're going to play a game through Imperator Rome and CK2 or 3, whichever you prefer, uh, into EU4, again, into Vicky, if you decide to get into that. France is definitely a very busy nation to play as. So this is a very crazy start, I think. Uh, sometimes I, I prefer to start in some of the more obscure areas of the world. Feels a little bit safer. But we're going to be starting in France today. In fact, if I remember right, our last History of Paradox game started in France as well. It started over here in uh, Brittany. Um, but uh, ended up very quickly in South America. So you have to go watch that one if you if you want to see more of that one. But we're starting here in France, and the nation that we picked was Lingres, in, or the little district was Lingres in CK3, which is the same as Lingonia here in Imperator Rome. So Lingonia is the, I don't know if it's a nation or just the, I think it's a, uh, a tribe of sorts that we're going to be starting as in Imperator Rome. And again, I haven't played this game in so long and it's so much has changed. This is going to be a brand new let's play for me. So please bear with me as I'm learning the ropes all over again. Um, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So here we are in, um, in Lingonia here, like I said, so right here. Uh, so we've got all of this stuff here around here, right? We've got a few, um, quite a few provinces here, actually. Uh, and of course, some of these, as you can see, as I'm highlighting them, 
do t seem to belong to some other larger um, territories or provinces, whatever they're they're classified as in this game. Looks like, in fact, looks like our little little counties or states or spots of land. Um, I guess they're called settlements in this game. Uh, it looks like we have three that we're made up of. We're, we, we all we're, we're part of three separate ones of this larger. What are these? I actually don't know what these are. Um, we have a way to see. Oh, there we go. I guess it's uh, provinces. Okay, so our little thing is, is split into three different provinces. So definitely there is benefit of obtaining each of these provinces and filling them out a little bit more. Uh, there, there's definitely benefit of doing that. So that might be one of our first goals is trying to stretch out to some of these areas and, and overtake some of those things. But I think because we are fairly surrounded here, we have a little bit of no man's land over here. Although I say no man's land, I guess it's, yeah, it is impassable terrain. Um, so we're a little bit protected on this side, but anything could go from these other angles. It's going to be a little scary, I think, starting off. And of course, uh, unlike last time when I played where we were over here in Germany, we were pretty safe from Rome. Um, Rome could easily come up through here and, and, and mess with us a bit if we are not careful. So expect that probably later in the game. Um, so what do we do? What do we start? How do we get this going? Well, let's go through a little bit of what's going on with our nation and see what we've got going for us. We are, again, Ligonia. We are a settled tribe, forest heritage, which means we have a little bit more tribesman happiness, uh, our better archers offense, uh, which is pretty cool, but more expensive build costs. All right, so that's that. Um, there's our power base. If the high enough portion of the total power base is controlled by disloyal characters, a civil war can break out. Fair enough. Number of territories. Uh, Seguania owns four. Lucia owns four. And Hedwea owns three. So that's our, the three little provinces that make up, you know, kind of the different territories we have. Um, power base. Why are there two different power base? Oh, okay. I guess this is, uh, is this happy people and unhappy people, maybe? I actually don't know. Uh, count, country civilization level. All right, national national unrest. Okay, so there's all that. We are Hadui, Hadui, and Druidic. So we are definitely 100% Druidic, and we're 100% Hadui. Uh, I guess that's our culture. Is this Hadui, uh, which is actually part of the larger whatever this is, this, this greenish color, um, peoples, if you will, um, and. Then religion is druidic, which all of this is druidic, so that makes sense. Tribesmen, we're mostly tribesmen. We got a few freemen, a couple slaves, and a couple citizens. Interesting. We got some decisions here. Uh, we don't have any ideas for military or oratory. I vaguely remember those. There's our administration, provinces. There's our provinces, Lucia. Okay, that's right. We have governors over the different provinces. That's right. I remember that now. All right. Well, before we get too much further, let's. What kind of um, trade goods do we have over here? So again, this is, is there a way to overlay these? Mm, I don't think so. All right, so there's us right here. All right, so we have horses, we've got iron, horses, grain, furs, horses, livestock, uh, hemp, and wood. I mean, the iron and the wood sounds pretty, uh, horses sounds pretty good too. I mean, I think we're gonna be able to get some pretty good units from those three combinations for sure. Um, all right, let's go through some of this. We got the macro builder, which, you know, if we had some money, which we have a little bit of money, but not a lot. So then we can look at it at some point. Uh, there's our nation overview. We've already looked at that. Who are we? Where is us? Is that in your summer government? Ah, here we go. The reign of tribal chief Corius. Corius Punish Punicus. Punicus. There we go. Punicus. Corius Punicus, a tribal chief, 26 years old. All right. 26 years young, maybe. Um... And he has power base of 15, loyalty. There's all that stuff going on him. This is for, this is arranged differently than the last time I played. So I'm trying to remember where all this is. He does have a spouse, Ilica Aldexa, 20 years old. All right, cool stuff. Um, I'm not sure what that little symbol there is. Uh, no children yet. Uh, we have no parents, apparently. We can arrange an adoption. That's interesting. I don't remember that. Grant holding, scheme influence. Okay, cool, cool. The stuff he is humble and he's shrewd. So we got a little bit extra finesse and a little bit extra charisma. There's our marshal, only a marshal of six, but charisma is pretty good. Uh, and then finesse is pretty good. Zeal is not so great. Um, so that's our uh, government. Here's our clan chiefs. So we're one of the clan chiefs. Uh, we got this other two clan chiefs here who are currently reasonably loyal to us, but. 
Um, is it going up or dropping? Can we see that? Family married to ruler family. Okay. Oh, that's our that's our wife, isn't it? Okay, yeah. So we're actually married to a member of this family, and then we've got this guy. Maybe once we unpause, we'll see if it goes up or down. Uh, who's one of our other chieftains? Okay, fair enough. And then there's our economy. Uh, we can raise and lower taxes, which we're not going to mess with right this second. Army maintenance. Do we even have a military? I don't see a military at the moment. Religion. All right. Druids. No holy sites in any of these places. Okay, good stuff. To note it. Culture. There's our culture groups, which is only one. Trade overview. Obviously, we can set up some trade routes and stuff like that. Military. Celtic traditions. Oh, okay. So we have different traditions here. Oh, wow. We begin the game with access to these traditions. This is due to the state culture of Lingonia is Gaelic. Uh, okay. But we also get Britannic traditions. Interesting. Which gives us some, some, some other options. These are locked at the moment. Gotcha. Levies. We do have levies available. Uh, chariots, light cavalry, archers, chariots, light cavalry, archers. We can raise those if we needed to. Mercenaries. Obviously recruit mercenaries. That's normal. Diplomacy. Probably want to send some people out to try and make some friends. What we need to do is, most likely, is try to make a couple friends here to protect us a little bit. So we only have to focus on one side and then go to war with a couple of the other ones. So... I'm thinking like this guy up here in this kind of lightish pinkish reddish color um, might be a good one to go after at some point because it's part of the same, like I said, thing that we have. Although going after the one that, that, can, that our capital's in would also be pretty useful, I think, which that would be in, where is it? Oh, there we go, provinces. Um, let's send this one over here. That's actually gonna be a little bit harder, I think. So I think going after this pink guy would be a little bit better. Um, technology. So there's our technology. Like new researcher. Okay, nothing at the moment. Characters. Lots of characters and missions. And we can start a mission. Matter of Germania Superior. Our forces await us in the foreign lands. The Germania Superior region has been considered part of our borders, yet much of it remains beyond our control. Make sure that it is brought under our influence one way or another. Completion criteria. This mission will be considered complete when the entire region of Germania Superior is under Lingonian influence. Germania Superior. Where is that? Germania Superior. Honestly, I don't know. I thought it would tell us here. It doesn't tell us at the moment. All right, well, we'll come back to that. All right. Well, we're still paused. I mean, goodness, we're what, 13 minutes into this video and we still haven't even paused, but that's typical for a Paradox game, uh, as most of you guys probably know. Uh, message log ledger, anything else here that I want to jump on? Uh, there's our treasury. There's our manpower, which I remember that being a pretty big struggle last time. Political influence, military experience, stability currently. Okay. Aggressive expansion. No aggressive expansion at the moment. We haven't gone to war with anybody. I mean, we may want to go to war pretty quickly here. Um... And again, let's come back to uh, the actual political map mode. Like these guys up here, what can we see what their strength is at the moment? Where would we see their strength? Let's see it. We just go to the leader. Siphoning funds. Um, I don't see. I don't see. Like their military power. Gotta be a way to do that, right? Tactical. Hmm. Something to think about. Uh, but like I said, I definitely want to try and make friends with somebody. Change governor. How do I... different terrain territory train as well that we got to make sure we take take uh, into account um make friends okay make friends 
I don't think that's what we're looking for, though. I just need to unpause and just see what's going on. We do a couple imports here. Now the imports, if I remember right, if you do certain combinations, you get certain bonuses. Uh, there's obviously there's like the local uh, bonus, and then there's the surplus and capital bonuses that can spill out, which is always very useful. Like a military idea. How much does it cost? Twenty idea cost points. And we've got. 200, right? That's the political influence. Morale of armies is always good in games like this. Shipbuilding costs. Pretty sure we won't need be needing shipbuilding costs anytime soon. Um, we can get an oratory and we can get a military one. Do we want to go ahead and pick this up? I mean, I don't see any specific reason why we wouldn't. Uh, most of these other ones. I mean, discipline can be pretty good as well. Uh, morale of navies we don't care about. National manpower is useful, um, which we can always switch to that later, I assume. Sure, this may be a bad idea, but I feel like let's go for it. Monthly corruption going down. Do we have any corruption at the moment? Uh, where would we see corruption? Let's see it up there. Oh, we have these. That's right. Little flags. Oh, in fact, it's telling us we have a free idea slot. Uh, loyalty of generals, loyalty of admirals, that's always good. Improve opinion maximum, plus 30%, 3%. I don't think we have any corruption right now, so I don't know that we need that one. Loyalty of generals feels like a pretty good idea. So does the opinion one, but... Let's go military. Let's, let's, let's go, let's uh, try to be aggressive here at the beginning. All right, we got... Bad research ratio. Our citizens and nobles produce 0.08 research points each month with an output of one each year and 65 integrated culture pops. We get an efficiency of 1.63% for our research. Maximum efficiency cannot be higher than 125%. How do we fix that? Look the technology category. Oh, okay. Military artisans. All right, well, I'm sure that will go up as we start building buildings and doing other things and maybe moving pops around to different types. Unused trade routes. Okay, we definitely want to get some trade routes going. Um, we've got currently, what do we have currently in our capital? I'm sure it's staring me right in the face. Do we have anything? We've got horses currently. We've got iron coming in. Local tax plus 4%. Plus we can get some heavy infantry discipline. So if we imported some more horses, for example, it would give us a surplus and heavy cavalry discipline would go up. So that's an option. We can always bring some grain in. I like bringing the horses in. They're just regular horses. They are regular horses. From, I don't know, doesn't matter, right? Probably somewhere that we want to make sure we're not planning on going to war with. Where is Leto? Leto Bishia. I don't even know where these places are. I don't even see them on the map. This map mode is a little hard to see with the, the forest and stuff. Leto Bishia. Uh, Latopicia. Oh, wow. Oh, I didn't realize we could trade from that far away. Oh, well, they're not going to be a problem for us anytime soon. So that that's probably okay, actually. This one has less negative. Medio. Tricia. That one is actually right next to us. Well, it's actually one step away. You know what? Sure. Let's go with this one. Why not? There might be a better way of doing this, but I like it. Our entire country gets the following benefits. Heavy cavalry discipline. Cool. Does uh, our, our chariots count as heavy cav? Not mercenaries. Military. Are these heavy cav? 
or that is it literally heavy cavalry like is it literally like i bet it is literally heavy cavalry okay it's not a type of heavy cavalry it is literally the name heavy cavalry i'm guessing uh okay so that's our first one what else would we want to bring in so we do have a surplus of iron at the moment and we now have a surplus of horses anything else we brought in would not be a surplus would just be whatever we need to continue and we could hold off a little bit and make sure that we are getting um the right thing i mean bring any food and grain and stuff like that always feels good local happiness local citizen happiness freeman happiness slave happiness okay and tribes and happiness stuff like that so there's lots of happiness ones here um i'm still feeling like this food I'll just grow, get bigger, get better. I mean, the plus five looks a little bit better. So let's go with grain. And it looks like we can only get this from one place. Sure, whatever. We'll go with that. Just a couple of imports coming in. And let's take care of that. And call down an omen. Oh, I remember the omens. Monthly tyranny minus 0 0.04, slave output, civilization change, hostile attrition. Civilization change, I remember, was being was a pretty good one back uh, when I used to do this last time. Monthly tyranny. Now, let's go for the civilization change for now. It's five years. Maybe it's a bad idea, but I feel like being more civilized always turns into a good thing in the long run. All right, I think that's all we can do right now. Bad research ratio. There's nothing we can do about that. Let's just unpause for a little bit. We're going to let it go on speed three for just a little bit and start seeing what's going to happen here. Uh, we are starting to get a few things. Um, so some people want some trade routes. Again, I wish I could see who these people wore a little bit better. Lindsay. Okay, not right. Oh, it's way down there. Oh yeah, sure. That's helpful. Uh, sure, you can have some horses, I think, right? We have three sets of horses, don't we? And do we still have the uh, plus one now? Yeah, we're still good. Okay. All right, so that took care of... That's actually the only one I guess everybody wanted. Everybody wanted the horses. We are making some money. Um... Audia, we're out here. Okay, if this is something they want, they want an alliance. Okay, so like I said, I wanted to start getting some alliances with some of the guys next to me. Uh, and this guy is probably okay for me to get an alliance with because if I want to go like northeast or north or something like that first, then being in alliance with this guy would be would be pretty helpful. So I think I'm actually okay with this. And we're going to accept that one. Cool, so we have an ally now. And... Why am I not allowing this guy on the green black guy on the bottom here? Maybe leaving these guys open. How would we do that? Alliance actions. There we go. I was right click what I was looking for. Offer alliance. They would. They would accept. It looks like. Okay, so we've got two allies now. Now these guys up here. What I would rather have is. Fabricated claim. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. Yes. Okay, it's fabricated claim up there. Province of Lucia. There we go. Okay. We've got a claim being fabric fabricated, uh, which is right there. Good stuff. Goes up by plus 6% each month. The claim is expected to be ready around February 1st of 452. So a couple years to wait. Uh, is there anything we can do in the meantime with our macro builder? Uh, we can get a fortress. Lowers manpower, gets a little bit more defense. Uh, city buildings, settlement buildings, city buildings. Ships we don't have, obviously. Import trade goods. We're not going to mess with right now. Really, the only thing we can do is a fortress, apparently. What's the difference here between each of these? Is this the exact same thing? It's just popping up twice. 
It does increase civilization level. It lowers manpower, which does not feel good. Let's leave that off for just now, for, for the moment. What else should we be doing right now? And honestly, I feel like we're just waiting for this thing to pop. Now, are we going to be able to do anything against him? I don't know. Uh, he may be too strong for us by the time we get there. Uh, can we do another claim by any chance? I mean, let's do a claim here as well, if we can. Uh, same province. Why not? All right, we'll get a couple claims. I, we may not use them both. I don't know if we want to go more than that, because I feel like that would be a little bit extreme. Probably going to be too hard for us to do this as is. Can I wish there was a way? Can we see? Uh, I bet we can see military power here, can't we? Number territory six. I'd be here somewhere. Got two diplo relationships. Opinions. I know it's here, right? It's got to be here somewhere. Military techs. He's also got morale of armies. Gotta be staring me right in the face, right? Declare war. I feel like that would be a little soon if we don't have a claim yet, right? Although I guess I think early in the game you can usually declare war. At least in uh EU4 you can without quite the same penalty. Now we can see our manpower, we just can't see theirs. Without a spy present. Oh, okay, okay. Well, let's. Can we send a spy? Covert actions? Mm, relation actions. No. Influence actions. Access actions. Okay. Do we have. How many diplomats do we have? Can we see that? Usually, stuff like that, again, in EU4 is up here at the top. So that's when I'm not. I'm a little blind seeing it because I wouldn't mind improving some relationships with some of these guys that we've got, you know, alliances with. A son has been born. Hey! Bella, Bella whatever, Bellicanius. Your opinion. What costs us money? Oh, wow. How do we get a daughter? It hasn't been long enough. How do we... What? <laughs> That doesn't make sense. How do we get a son and a daughter like a day apart or day or two apart? Like that's some weird, that's some weird twins right there. That's some weird twins. Let's say when he was born, July 5th, 451. August. Oh, a month later. They were born a month apart. Don't think that's how it works, guys. All right. Lucia is at 66%. I mean, this may be a huge mistake. This 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 series might be over. <laughs> Second episode. But I always feel like you have to be pretty aggressive early in the game here. So let's go for it. Why not? We got a little bit of money, so we could always hire some mercs, right? Maybe. Uh, probably wouldn't be able to keep them very long. Stockpile disappears. It's come to our attention that a substantial amount of the state food stockpiles of the province of Lucia have seemingly disappeared overnight. The whereabouts of the supplies are still debated. Some claim a group of ass assertive Etruscan merchants swindled an incompetent clerk. Others that a vengeful god spirited them away in anger. In any case, the reserves are severely diminished. Majorix is one of my governors, who has an opinion of 57 at the moment, is responsible. Loses 10 loyalty for 60 months. No longer be governor. Oof. Just have to buy it back. Heads will roll. This would get, make me cruel. Don't know if I want to be cruel. Um, he would gain some stuff. They can always grow more. He loses some loyalty. They lose loyalty, and they lose food. Ouch. Either way, I think they're going to lose food, right? Yeah, any one of these are going to lose food. What I can do is buy some stuff, which I think is the right move. I mean, yeah, money is very important right now, but let's keep the food available. 
Keep the loyalty. Keep everybody happy for right now. Sure. Although we kind of needed that money to get some mercs, didn't we? Um, yeah, we need 100 to get them, and then they're going to cost an X amount of money. Um, yeah, these are, these are going to be tough to, to support until we get a bit more money. Again, I wish I could figure out how... Again, it's got, it's got, it's got to be the spy, right? That's how we see... Of course, the manpower doesn't tell us how many possible troops they have. We have more territories than they do, though. So, in theory, we can build a better, bigger military. Probably not true. I don't know. We've got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, 8,000. Why does that say zero five? It looks like we have 8,000 total troops. I'd be surprised if they have that many. All right, here we go. It's coming up. All right, we got us a CB. And on that note, we're going to put our first cut in this, this series. Um, again, I apologize for a little bit of a slow start. We are learning as we go again because a lot of stuff has changed. I think once we get rolling, though, it'll start picking up pretty quickly here. Uh, but yeah, once we come back next episode, cliffhanger, we are going to go to war. Might be a mistake. We'll find out. But yeah, I do appreciate you guys watching. May God bless you. And I hope, I hope, I hope that you join me again next time. Thank you and goodbye.